Okay, this chapter talks about histology. Histology over here is the study of tissues. As we know, we all are made of cells. And when you put together a group of cells, what you're going to get is a tissue. There are four primary tissues. These four primary tissues, as you can see here in this table, are going to be epithelial, connective, nervous tissue, as well as muscular tissue. Obviously, epithelial tissue is composed of layers that they are going to be formed with different kinds of cells. And they're going to perform multiple different functions, such as covering organs, surfaces, form glands, etc. Connective tissue usually is a type of uh, tissue that will allow you to provide support and bind and protect organs, such as, for example, in the case of tendons. Nervous tissue is a tissue in which the cells are specialized in transmitting information from one cell to another, and obviously you find that in the nerves. And muscular cell, muscular tissue is the one that has specialized cells that are going to uh, perform contractions such as the skeletal muscle. So these are the four primary tissues. This is something very important that you should be aware of. There are four primary tissues as well. And these are going to be epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous system, nervous tissue. So after that we have embryonic tissues. You don't need to know much about it since this is not an embryology class. Just as an FYI, there are primary layers and these primary layers are going to be ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. But that's all you need to know about it. Okay, and then again, you don't need uh, you need to know about it, but that's just a second FYI. This is not going to be part of your test. Now, interpret, interpreting tissue sections. Uh, this is something that you will learn when you look at these tissues in the microscope. Obviously, depending on how the cut is and where you are looking at, you're going to have different views of the same thing. Take a look at this one, for example. You see, if you cut this thing at this level, what you're going to see is this part. You cut it at this level. Then you're going to see it this way. And you cut it at this level, then you're going to see it this way. It's the same thing, but you have different views of the same thing. Again, this is just practice and something that you're going to get with the use of the microscope. So if we scroll down. It talks about different things that histologists are going to do. You can skip pretty much all this. Obviously, this is something that we talk about longitudinal or transverse sections. This is, again, that what we have learned in chapter number one with different clients and things that we can use in order to do things. So with that, basically that's it for this. The next item in here is the epithelial tissue. Uh, so let's talk about it. The epithelial tissue has multiple different types of functions such as protection, secretion, excretion, absorption, filtration, and sensation. And how do you get this tissue? Again, we said that the tissues are formed uh, based on cells. Right? A group of cells is going to give you a tissue. So then what type of cells can we have? We can have flat cells. And the flat cells like this, they are called squamous. We can have cells that look like cubes. Cells are going to be called cuboidal. And there are cells that are going to look like columns, and they're going to be cuboidal. Now, there are two main things that you need to talk about when you talk about epithelial tissues. The cell shape, this one, as well as the number of layers. If you have one layer of cells, it's called simple. We have multiple layers of cells, like this, called stratified. We will talk about pseudo-stratified later on. Okay, so let's scroll down. And remember, when you talk about an epithelial tissue, you need to tell uh, that cell shape as well as the number of layers. One layer is simple, multiple layers is stratified. So let's just scroll down and let's take a look at these other characteristics that we have in the uh, epithelial tissue. So when you talk about it, you, uh, you combine the number of layers as well as the cell shape, cell shape in order to identify the type of uh, epithelial tissue. For example, simple squamous. Simple squamous means one layer, simple squamous fat cells. Simple cuboidal. One layer, the cell looks like a cube. Simple cube, simple columnar. One layer. The cell looks like columns. Let's talk about pseudostratified. Pseudostratified is the type of tissue that appears to be stratified, but it is not. The only thing is that in this case, the cells have multiple uh, lengths, multiple sizes, and because of that, the nucleus appears to uh, the nucleus are going to be at different levels because they have different lengths, different heights. Since the nucleus have different heights, 
then it appears that you have multiple different layers, but it is not. It's just one layer, but since the cells have multiple different heights, then obviously the cell will appear to be stratified, but it is not. Therefore, it is called pseudo stratified. If we scroll up again, you can see that this layer and this layer both start at the same level. But this nucleus, this nucleus, and this nucleus, and this nucleus right here, it appears that they are at one level, and this other nucleus right here appear to be at a different level. But they are not. These cells start at the same level. The only thing is that they have different lengths. And because they have different lengths, it may give you the impression that you have two different levels, because this cell of nucle this nucleus that you have in here are at a different level than this one right here. But again, that's not true because all these cells start at the same level. Take a look in here. The cells have nucleus at different levels, similar to this, but the cells actually start at different levels, which is the difference with this, because the cells in here, they start at the same level. These ones start at the same level, these ones start at a different level. So because of this, this one appears to be like this, but it is not. Therefore, that's the reason why it's called pseudo-stratified. So let's just scroll down and now we have finished with simple epithelial and now let's take a look at stratified epithelial. You have stratified epithelial, again, you have to mention that cell shape as well as the number of layers. So you're going to have stratified squamous, that means flat cells, multiple layers, stratified cuboidal, cubes, the cells look like cubes, multiple layers, stratified columnar, the cells look like columns, but you have multiple layers. Another one, in this case is transitional epithelium. In this case, transitional epithelium is going to be a tissue that is going to have uh, different cells that they appear to be one kind, but then they transition into a different kind. That's why it's going to be called transitional. For example, the cells in your urinary bladder, when, the, when your urinary, urinary bladder is empty, these cells are going to look like cubes. But when your urinary bladder is full with urine, these cells will have to expand in order to accommodate the amount of urine that is in your urinary bladder. When they expand, these cube cells will become kind of like flat cells because they will have to elongate. They will have to enlarge in order to allow the uh, retention of urine at the level of your urinary bladder. For that reason, since when they don't have, when the urinary bladder doesn't have urine, the cells look like cubes, and then when it has urine, the cells look like flat, then that's why it's called transition, because it appears to transition from one epithelium to another epithelium due to the different uh, levels of urine that you're going to find in your urinary bladder. One characteristic that a stratified epithelium will allow you is that since you have multiple layers, it will allow you to, to shed cells. As you see here, it says, exfoliation of this squamation. Since you have multiple layers, like for example in your skin, you should be able to shed these layers that you have on the top of your skin, and then you have more layers at the bottom that will help you replace, replace these cells that you have uh, lost on the top of your skin. Because again, Stratify allows you to do that. As you can see in this example, you can see here the exfoliation of the cells that are on the top of the surface, and because of that, obviously, uh, you have other cells below them that will help you replace them. That's one characteristic of the stratified. Okay, if we we'll scroll down, you can see that stratified squamous obviously has uh, the characteristic of toad, or there are two main kinds that you can say. One of them is keratinized, the other one is non-keratinized. We will talk ab more about it when we talk about the skin uh, in the next chapter. So let's keep going down, and here we have transition epithelium, as I told you. You may have this epithelium at the level of your urinary bladder, but it's basically, look, it says in here, right, it's um, limited to the urinary tract because it's necessary in order to protect the cells that you have in there uh, from the acidity that the urine is going to have. But that's basically what you need to know about the transitional epithelium that is located in the urinary bladder, which is part of the urinary tract because most of it is located in the urinary system. So let's take a look at some of these figures that you have regarding the epithelial tissue. So right here you have simple squamous, okay, that means simple, one layer, squamous, flat cells. These four figures you see here are, are the same thing, but these ones down here at the bottom are same as this, but they are being 
uh, let's say enhanced in here so you can see where the cells are. So as you can see here, this is one layer, though, so that's why it's called simple. And this is called squamous because these cells are actually flat. Remember, they are not exactly flat, right, like this. Because they have this round area is where the nucleus is, so obviously it's more like a cat rather than flat completely. So in here you see this is flat, but it kind of has this little thing in here which is for the nucleus. So this is going to be simple squamous. Take a look at this figure now, same as the top. In this case it's one layer of cells, one layer of cells, one layer of cells, even though this is a tube, right, but it's just one layer, right? Okay, but in here the cells are cubes. So in this case, this is simple cuboidal. Okay, if we keep scrolling down, so you have in here, obviously, these cells, these cells are not flat, they are not cubes, these ones are like columns, you have, and you can see here, you have one layer, right, so therefore, this is simple columnar. In here, you have pseudo-stratified, again, all the cells in here, right, they're going to start at the same level, but if you look at this nucleus right here, and this nucleus right here, it appears that you have two layers of cells again. Why? Because this is one layer of nucleus and this is another layer of nucleus. But it is not because all the cells start at the same level. So therefore, what is this? This is pseudo-stratified. Let's keep scrolling down. And we're going to take a look at the next cell. Next cells, and uh, I mean the next tissue. Right here you have, if you look from left to right, these cells right here, they are flat cells. And do you have one layer? No, look, you have all these layers of cells. So therefore, since you have all these layers of cells, this is going to be stratified. And since you have multiple layers, then this is going to be simple, I mean, stratified squamous. Same thing in here. You see the cells here. These are going to be flat cells, therefore they are squamous, and you have multiple layers, so this is stratified, so therefore this is simple stratified. So what's the difference between this simple stratified and this simple stratified? That these ones are going to have a keratin, and these ones do not have keratin. So therefore, what are these? This is simple, I mean this is stratified squamous keratinized. This is just a stratified squamous non-keratinized. So let's take a look at the title of it. Yes, right here. Stratified squamous keratinized. Stratified squamous non-keratinized. So if you scroll down, well, you can see here some examples, right? Stratified squamous keratinized, for example, in the sole of your feet, as well as in your hands, right? In the palm of your hands. And this ones you're going to find, for example, in your vagina, right? Where you have stratified squamous, but it's not. No, it's not keratinized. So if you scroll down, you can go to the next one. And we can see here this is a stratified cuboidal. Because you can see here you have two layers of cell. Right? Obviously more than one is definitely stratified. Right? More than one. One is simple, more than one is a stratified. So you can clearly see in this model that is enhanced one cell, two cells. See? One cell, two cells. So then that means that this is going to be stratified and this is going to be cuboidal. Right here, you can see transitional epithelium, whereas you can see the cells are going to have multiple different shapes and sizes of cells. And again, this will allow that particular uh, organ to stretch, like for example, in the case of the urinary system, in this case, the urinary bladder. Okay, so when you look at the cells that are being enhanced, there's no particular kind of cell in here because these cells are going to allow this particular tissue to perform the job that will allow the organ to perform the main job that it needs to perform. Okay, so again we said that mainly we find transitional epithelium in the urinary system as you can see right here. Okay, this is your kidney and this is urinary system. Okay, and if we scroll down, well that's about it for this part.